Hi everyone, this week we're reflecting on Leviticus chapter 19, the first half of it, um, verses 1 to 18, and we um, see that this passage is bookended by two well-known phrases, the first one being, be holy, as, uh, for I the Lord your God am holy, and uh, the second one being, love your neighbour as yourself. Thinking about holiness, um, holiness is a sense of um, perfection, wholeness, completeness. It, it involves purity and an absence of sin. And God is holy. God is um, perfect in himself, complete in himself, and, and lacks nothing. And uh, there's also the sense of being set apart. And God is set apart from us. He's distinct from us. And he calls the people of Israel to be holy, to reflect his nature to the world around him, to be set apart, to be distinctive. See, the nations around them were um, pagan. They worshipped many gods. They, they had idols. They sacrificed um, and, and even sacrificed their children to one of their gods. They uh, There was ritual prostitution as part of the temple worship and so God says to the people of Israel you are not to be like that you are to live holy lives lives that reflect who I am um, pure perfect complete and then he lists ways that they can do that and what we see as we work through this is that holiness is not some pie in the sky thing it's not a nice kind of pious feeling it's it's um it, it definitely is about our commitment to god but it is also intensely practical and grounded in the everyday realities of life and it, it begins with um nurturing and um and sustaining the connection to god through things like sabbath keeping worship prayer bible study um gathering with others, um, all of these things, the spiritual disciplines that we, we we talk about so often, feed and sustain that connection, and that's where it starts. But then there's an outworking of it in everyday life, and we see this concern for justice, we see this concern for acting with honesty and integrity, we see this concern for looking after the needs of the poor and the vulnerable. And as we get into the second half of the, <clears throat> the passage, what we see consistently is this um, reference to your neighbour, to your neighbour, to your neighbour. We do certain things because they're for the good of our neighbour, to bless them, to bring benefit to them. And there are certain things that we refrain from doing because they bring harm to our neighbour. And we're not to do anything that might harm our neighbour. We, we see this concern to, to kind of live at peace with one another and um, to be peacemakers. And then all of this is summed up with that, um, that phrase that through Moses, God says to the people of Israel, love your neighbor as yourself. And of course, Jesus quotes that, that saying when he's asked, what is the greatest commandment? He begins by saying, the greatest commandment is that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And the second commandment is like it, love your neighbour as yourself. And then Jesus goes on to tell the story of the Good Samaritan, um, demonstrating that loving your neighbour is not about how we feel towards them, it's not about our attitude, it's about what we do in terms of um, supporting and loving and tending to their needs. It's very, very practical. And... Um, Jesus, in his Sermon on the Mount, says, as it says at the beginning of Leviticus, be holy as your Father in heaven is holy, or be complete, or be perfect. And that too, for us, is lived out in everyday life in very practical ways. You see, just as Israel was called to um, demonstrate to the world what God is like, we now are the people of God. In, uh, the first letter of Peter, it says that you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God. 
we are now the ones who are called to bear the image of God in a world that doesn't know him. So every every situation, every um, trip to the shops, every um, conversation with our, our neighbours and, and workmates, every meal with our friends and family and all of this, we bear the image of God and we are called to be set apart and distinctive. This doesn't mean escaping or, or drawing away from people. In fact, it means engaging more, but it means doing that in a way that reflects the image and character of God. Being people of peace, being reconcilers, being people who act with integrity and honesty in all that we do, being um, people who seek justice and um, and live in just ways. And what comes to mind is uh, another passage that we know well from Micah 6, 8. He has shown you, O people, what is good and what the Lord requires of you to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. So as you reflect together on this passage, um, my prayer is that God would uh, help you see what are the things that you might be able to do in your everyday life, whether it's in small situations or whether it's thinking about bigger things that are going on in our city, in our nation, and in our world. May God show you the ways in which you may practically love your neighbour and live holy lives. Bless you.